Tonight, Borders, Corridors, and Lines of Desire is the name of an, of an exhibit now on display at the University of Maine at Farmington. It is the creation of two professors, Galen and Gustavo Aguilar. The two spent three summers traveling the Lewis and Clark Trail, interacting with people along the way, and researching the divisions and connections that exist between cultures within America. We sat down with the two to talk about the collection and the message they hope others take from it. So when you come downstairs, uh, the two pieces you see are, for lack of a better word, the original sins, how we built this nation, which is the attempted genocide of the native people, and also the free labor that we needed through the slavery. So how those resonate still today, and also trying to work into the history. Then you come to the second floor, and we are start questioning the idea of the immigrants. So if you look at these right here, the lenticulars, those are iconic pictures from Ellis Island, but if you look carefully, all of a sudden my face superimposes itself on the original, so they're lenticular, so I'm questioning that we all come here legally, that we all come here through Ellis Island. We were thinking a lot about um, this concept called cultural citizenship, and it's this idea of, um, you know, how how can one be who one is, but at the same time belong as a first-class citizen in a sort of participatory democracy sense. And so, you know, we thought um, it would be kind of interesting to explore this idea of, like, who belongs, who doesn't in this country of ours um, while on a trail that has a lot of um, uh, historical resonance for you know some of these processes that have put people in relationship to one another. The journey led them through small towns and reservations where they interacted with Native Americans and looked at their role within their communities. Then it took them to the border. Over 6,000 miles, yes. you worked with 12 partners, and you served 900 tacos. A little, a little bit more, <laughs> but yeah, around 900. We may have eaten some. <laughs> <laughs> what was it about the tacos? I went back to my hometown, which is Brownsville, Texas. It's the southernest tip in the United States. There's over about uh, over 100 taquerias, but there is one Taco Bell, and it survives. So we walked the streets of Brownsville, Texas, which is largely 98 Mexican-American, uh, population and ask who eats a Taco Bell, how does Taco Bell survive and the people there had no, uh, no problem eating a Taco Bell and they understood it wasn't traditional and they could eat also grandma's, abuelitas, tacos or in the taquerias so they were very fluid but that's not again what we hear in the media, we hear that you know these people are this or these people are that but in Brownsville, we, you know, we got to see how fluid people were, very comfortable, both as U.S. citizens, but also having a very rich Mexican uh, tradition or Mexican-American by that time. Uh, Lewis and Clark get safe in North Dakota in the first winter they encounter by a group of uh, Native people. And in that group, they already had the watermelon. And the watermelon is from African descent. So the, already food had been, you know, trade routes had been established, food that we would think comes from Africa was found there. So that was part also of our idea. What are those things that transcend? What the Aguilars did learn is that maybe America isn't as divided as we think or hear about in the news, and that there is still much to be learned through history and through conversation. We had uh, a man who was responsible for the Hispanic vote for the Republican for Trump in this case, and he said, if we're not careful, there's going to be a taco stand in every corner. So we took about over 100 photographs of taquerias along the historical Lewis and Clark Trail. Too late, they're there. <laughs> They've been there for a long time. You know, uh, the Mexican-American is one of the most decorated soldiers in the armed forces, right? But the things that we're missing, that's what I mean, the stories we don't get sometimes create those miscommunications. An interesting journey. We mentioned the two handed out tacos mm -hmm. along that journey. And part of their interactive exhibit, they offer up this recipe for cheese tacos with cilantro <laughs> pesto. So if you are interested, you can find the recipe in the 207 section of our website or our mobile app. Bringing history to life. Yeah.